So for those of you that know me, you know that I'm a big Disney guy. I love going to Disney parks. I love watching Disney TV shows. I love the music. And of course, I love Disney movies. Now, I will give my wife and my mom and Doug plenty of grief that they watch Hallmark movies because the plot in every Hallmark movie is exactly the same. But if I'm being honest, every Disney movie pretty much has the same exact plot. <laughs> I mean, sure, there's some, some uh, uh, variances from there, but for the most part, we're introduced to a main character. The main character goes on an adventure far away from home. They run into some challenges. Things start going against them. It looks like they might just give up. And then something miraculous happens. And they're able to complete what they were trying to do. And everybody lives happily ever after. I mean, again, sure, there's there's a couple that aren't like that. But for the most part, they're like that. I mean, think about the movie uh, Moana. We're introduced to this young girl. She, she lives over in the Hawaiian Islands, and her island is cursed. So she goes on an adventure to break the curse of the island, and she runs into some challenges. Things get tough. She almost quits. Then something miraculous happens. The, the curse on the island is broken. Everybody lives happily ever after. Think about Finding Nemo. We're introduced to a fish named Marlin. Marlin has a son named Nemo. Nemo is scooped up by a scuba diver, and so Marlin goes on an adventure to go find his son. He runs into some challenges, almost quits. Something miraculous happens, allows him to find his son. Everybody lives happily ever after. It doesn't matter which Disney movie you're looking at, who the main character is, whether it's Ariel, Belle, Aladdin, Simba, Cinderella, whoever it is, They follow this same Disney storyline. Now let me ask you, if your life was a Disney storyline, where would you be in that storyline? Now some of you, you'd be right at the new adventure part. I mean, maybe you're you're in a new relationship, or maybe you started a new job. Or maybe, you know, you're one of, the, one of the newer people here at Valley. So just coming here and meeting people, that's, that's a new adventure. And you're excited about the possibilities of what might happen. And, you know, you're just, it's a new adventure. It's awesome. Now, some of you, you've already seen the miraculous ending to an adventure. You know, maybe you, you were really, really sick. But then you got the clear diagnosis from the doctor. You saw that miraculous ending to that adventure. Maybe you lost a job and you you weren't quite sure what you were going to do, but then all of a sudden, this new job opportunity comes up and it's like this miraculous, happy ending to your adventure. Sometimes that miraculous ending just means you're starting a new adventure. But I'm thinking when I ask that question, If your life was a Disney movie, where in that storyline would you be? I'm almost certain that at least a few of you said, yeah, I'm I'm in the challenges. That's, That's where I'm at. I mean, there's no new adventures. Haven't seen any miraculous endings any any time recently. Just more challenges. And the thing about when you go through these, these challenges is they seem to come in waves. I mean, one thing will, will happen, and you think, okay, I, I've got that. I, I've got it under control. I can handle that. And then all of a sudden, something else comes. And then something else comes. And you get so tired just trying to take care of all of the stuff that's coming at you. And then all of a sudden, something new comes. And it takes you just about to your breaking point. And you just want to give up. You can't do this anymore. And all of a sudden, your focus isn't on this big picture, this adventure. You know, just as an aside, uh, Doug, 
Kurt, Jane, or I never talked about what they were going to say, but it's all been basically about the same thing, about what we're facing in this world and how tough it is. And, you know, we, we need one of those miraculous endings right now. And, you know, you, these, these challenges, they just seem to come in waves and they're relentless. And I'm guessing that some of you know what I'm talking about. You might be going through those challenges now or you just went through them. And you think, I could really use one of those Disney miraculous endings right now. That would be fantastic. Well, today, we're going to be continuing our series on the promises of the Bible. And we're going to be looking at when God showed up big time to his people that were going through some challenges. You know, we're, we're, going, to be, we're going to be looking at Exodus chapter 14, and we're going to be starting in verse 10. But before we start, I want to kind of set the scene a little bit. So... God has picked his chosen people. They're the Israelites. And he's, they're they're currently enslaved in Egypt. They're doing all the work for these Egyptians. And life for the Israelites is horrible. You know, they're getting beaten. They're getting whipped. You know, and they don't get to do what they want. It's just, you know, they're doing all the work for the Egyptians. And life is just horrible. And so God comes to this guy named Moses. And he says, Moses, I want you to lead my people out of Egypt. And so through these awesome miracles that that God makes happen, the king of the Egyptians, Pharaoh, he says, okay, fine, get out of here. And so the Israelites start going out of Egypt. The only thing is, the Egyptians quickly realized, we don't have anybody doing our work anymore. This isn't going to work. We need those guys back. And so Pharaoh and an army start to go after them. So the Israelites are, you know, kind of marching their way out in the desert. And all of a sudden they find themselves in between a rock and a hard place. They've got the Egyptians behind them, chasing them. And they come up to the Red Sea in front of them. They're trapped. And that's where we're going to pick it up here in verse 10. It says, as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us out to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better to serve the Egyptians than to die here in the desert. So the Israelites are on an adventure. They're going towards their freedom. They're finally free from slavery. And now things are starting to look bleak. And they seem to be at their breaking point. They're not sure if they want to turn back to a horrible life or maybe they're just going to die right there in the desert. And they're complaining about what seemed to be inevitable. And they didn't see a way out of trouble. And they were about to give up. Now, I don't want to speak for any of you, but I've been there. Not to the Red Sea, obviously, but I've been to a place where you make plans. You have this plan of how things are supposed to go. And then everything goes sideways. And all of a sudden you're left going, what is this? I didn't sign up for this. Nothing is like what it was planned. You know, a little over two years ago, I started here at Valley. And man, when I started here, I had all these plans. God was going to use me to not only change Wilsonville, but man, we were going to change the world. And, you know, I was talking with Doug about ideas about how to reach the community. And I don't know when it happened or where it happened, but all of a sudden, my passion started to fizzle. And I started to pay attention to the day-to-day tasks that I needed to get done every day that I was here instead of the mission of bringing Jesus outside this building. And, you know, others 
they started to notice something was wrong. And I was tired, and I was starting to question, God, am I even on the right track? Am I doing what you want me to do? And then, unbeknownst to me, a group of people started praying for me. They started praying that I would get that passion back, that God would put that passion back in my chest. And I would get, you know, little words of encouragement that would keep me going. And we'd get little wins in our ministerial adventures, like the Facebook thing we talked about earlier. And it helped me keep going. And then God pointed out a verse to me that's in this next section. And it's one that I hold on to every time I start to feel that, that I'm not sure if I'm on the right track. So picking it back up in verse 13, it says, Moses answered the people, do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance of the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You only need be still. Did you hear what Moses said? The omnipotent God that created the world and everything in it will fight for you. Doesn't matter what challenges you're going through. Doesn't matter what's happening in your life. The Lord will fight for you. And here's the thing. It's not a tag team match. God doesn't need your help. God will take care of it. You only need be still. And it's not just this verse that has that message. In fact, the Bible repeatedly says, give your challenges, give your problems, give your fears, your negative thoughts, give them all to God, and he will take care of it. Isaiah 41.10, it says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Joshua 1.9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. These verses and so many more in this book all have the same message. Just relax and understand that God can and will take care of it. We talked this morning that there are three answers to prayer. Yes, no, maybe later. God will answer your prayer. You only need to be still. It's kind of like a social media post that I saw a couple of weeks ago. It says, God made the world and everything in it in six days. I'm pretty sure he can handle whatever you're facing right now. And that's not meant to minimize what you're going through. Those are very real problems. What that's meant to show is just how big and powerful our God is. And as we get back to our passage, God gives an example of just how powerful he is. Starting in verse four, uh, 15, he says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. And then skipping down to verse 21, it says, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And all that night, the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. So I want to give you a little bit of context. This is not God putting a dam in the Willamette River so you can kind of go through shallow water. No, this was the Red Sea. And it's estimated, different theologians and historians, they estimate that where they crossed, it was eight miles wide. Let me give you a little bit of perspective here. If you walked right out our door, and that was the edge of the Red Sea, eight miles would put you at Cabela's in Tualatin. 
That's how far they walked through basically a water hallway. And the ground wasn't muddy. It was dry ground. Where there seems to be no way, God will make a way. He will fight for you. Now, the final part of our passage starts in verse 26. It says, Then the Lord says to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh had not, that had followed the Israelites into the sea, none of the, not one of them had survived. Not only did God provide an escape for his people, he took out the people that were chasing them. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. This is the perfect storyline. We're introduced to a group of people. They're going on an adventure. They run into some hardships, and they're about to give up. And then something miraculous happens and allows them to keep on going on their adventure. Now, I say keep on going instead of that miraculous ending because as we keep on looking at the book of Exodus, we'll find that at one point, the Israelites thought that they were going to starve. So God made it rain bread to feed them. At another point, they thought that they were going to die of thirst. There was no water anywhere. Now, sure, God could have made it rain, but instead he made water come out of a rock to prove that that was from God. Only this wasn't a made-up story. This is the story of God's people. And God continuing, continuing to take care of them. Over and over again, God's people face challenges, and he provides miraculous answers. And it doesn't stop with the stories in the Bible. My sister has always been a very driven, motivated, successful person. All her life, she's worked hard, and she's done well. Fifteen years ago, she had a baby. They already had a three-year-old at home. And so my sister was thinking, okay, when am I going to come back from maternity leave? When when am I going to go back to work? You know, planning this next this next phase of her life. And, you know, she's she's thinking about that, and then one morning, she finds a lump. Next thing you know, she's sitting in a doctor's office hearing a word that nobody ever wants to hear. Cancer. Just the word sounds like a death sentence. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, to be more specific. And her mind started swirling. She wasn't thinking about when she was going to go back to work. She was thinking about if her kids were going to have to grow up without a mother. And my sister will tell you that that is the hardest part of her life she's ever been through. But when she was faced with a life-threatening challenge, she quickly realized there was nothing that she could do to help. There was nothing she could do to fix this. She was overwhelmed because what she was facing was so incredibly big. She started going through chemotherapy, spending days at a time either in bed or in the bathroom getting sick. And she's never been one to ask people for help. In fact, more often than not, she's the one helping friends and family. But as she went through this horrific treatment that was trying to kill the cancer in her body, She and her family were forced to just be still and let God take care of them. God brought people 
People showed up in droves, brought the meals, took care of the kids, and just were just there to just let her vent and cry and just, just to be there. A little over a year later, cancer was gone. Fifteen years later, the cancer is still gone. And the only reason that she made it through this horrible part of her life is the same reason that you can make it through whatever challenges you're going through now. Because the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. Let's pray. Lord in heaven, thank you so much for today, and thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for fighting for us when we don't know what to do. Thank you for just always being there for us. Thank you for choosing us, Lord. It is truly in your name that we pray. Amen. Have a great week, everybody. Great to see you all.